Thanks, Dave. I feel great tonight. I got paid from NBC. I got my check. I took it down to the bank. The check cleared. Wow. So I feel, I feel marvelous. How are you tonight? Great, Paul. I feel Good. great. Thank you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you a little something about. Uh, it's my life. I don't know if it's my life. I don't know if it's the city we're living in. I don't know if it's the times we find ourselves in. This happened last night. I'm driving home. And by the way, wasn't last night the most beautiful early summer, late spring day you'll... Oh! We've been very, very lucky <laughs> with the weather. So I'm driving home, and I'm feeling pretty good about uh, life in general. And there's a fellow in a car right next to me, and he pulls up to me, and, and so now we're kind of going north on First Avenue together. And he continues to look over a little. After about a block and a half, he, he gives me this, which I believe is the signal to, to roll down your window. Yeah. Or a really silly wave. <laughs> So I, I roll down the window, and the guy says, Hey, are you, are you David Letterman? And I said, Why, yes, I am. <laughs> and he says, Hey, how's it going? And I said, Well, it's going pretty well. How's it going with you? And he says, Hey, it's going great with me. And he says, Where are you going? And I said, I'm going home. And he says, That's ah, great. Now, we hit that moment where he knows and I know we have nothing more to say to one another. <laughs> but he won't go away. He's yeah. still there. We're now motoring together up yeah. First Avenue. <laughs> Finally, I said, all right, son, keep moving. And he looks at me and he says, keep moving. Hell, I'll kick your ass. <laughs> yeah. And so then it, it was like a high-speed chase all the way to my house. <laughs> it, it went from, hi, how's it going? Nice yeah. to see you. To, Hell, I'll kick your ass. <laughs> I'm familiar with that sort of an encounter. <laughs> I think we're wired into the dumpster downstairs. Uh, Welcome back to the program. Roger Moore is here. I just met uh, Mr. Moore uh, backstage a few minutes ago. How is he? Very exciting to have him here. Yeah. And, and uh, I met him, you know, the band was playing, and I walked around, and I wanted to say hello to him. Standing, he's standing right back there. And the closer I got to him, I could tell he has no idea who I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, so always, always, you, you never want to take anything for granted. I said, how do you do, Mr. Moore? I'm David Letterman. Right. And he said, oh, yes, 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 I know. <laughs> and then I said, hell, I'll kick your ass, buddy. <laughs> Uh, and, and a very bright young girl, uh, 13 years old, Amanda Goad, she's the, uh, is it 1992 uh, Spelling Bee Champion? Yep, yeah, and we'll have her, we'll do a little spelling right here for yeah, us. Yeah, great. Uh, in the meantime, let's do the uh, top 10 uh, category list tonight, top 10 restrictions on the new Super Saver airfares. You know, <laughs> if you're traveling anywhere this summer, this is the perfect time because uh, I think American Airlines started it, then United Airlines followed suit, and then uh, U.S. Air and Continental, is there still a Continental? And uh, TWA, is there still a TWA? Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and uh, very, very low fares, you can fly anywhere. Cheap uh, fares. Yeah, my mother, as a matter of fact, is flying from Indianapolis to Salt Lake City for $8 round trip. $8, man. <laughs> but I guess you can't just travel anywhere. There's probably some restrictions on the flights. Exactly, Paul. That's mm -hmm. exactly what we're going to cover, cover here tonight with our top 10 restrictions <laughs> on the new Super Saver airfares. I here see. we go. Number 10. Uh, you may have to bring enough soda for everybody. Number nine. <laughs> on flights less than 500 miles, airline reserves right to take the interstate. Number eight. <laughs> Number eight. In-flight movie may be stop or my mom will shoot. Number seven. Uh, must make all connections in midair. Number six. <laughs> See, right, right there, I'd think twice about that. I... Uh, Number six. Carry-on items must fit securely inside your pants. Well, I don't know. What... <laughs> well, that would keep you from going anywhere, I would think. Uh, number five, when plane lands, you must remain on board for your return flight. We'll see there what really is the good of going if you can't get off the plane. Number four, a uh, passenger must be able to open package of airline peanuts in under one minute. Number three, uh, number three, might have to share a seat with Jerry Brown. Number two, yeah. number two, people on aisle may be asked to massage the captain. And the number one restriction on the new Super Saver airfare, you may be used as a flotation device. What is that? Is it like the hustle or something? Tighten up. Tighten up. Tighten up. What, what is that? Archie Bell and the Drells. Archie Bell and the Drells yeah, well, from, Houston, so it's, yeah. from Houston, from Houston, Texas. Texas. Yeah, but what, didn't they have another song besides the Tighten Up? Yeah, they had another song. They had a follow-up. 
We don't remember it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, it certainly is a valuable use of our airtime tonight. <laughs> I'm playing Name That Tune with the band. My favorite use. My yeah. favorite use of it. Yeah, well, well we, no we have a huge star back there. That's right. Let's yeah. get him out. Our first guest has no idea who I am. No, 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 no. <laughs> He is one of the biggest movie stars working today. Of course, he was James Bond in eight of those motion pictures, including The uh, Spy Who Loved Me and Live and Let Die. It's a pleasure to welcome him to this program. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Roger Moore. What you said about, you came up very nicely and said, David Letterman. Yeah. Of course, I know who you are. <laughs> Chuck Connors uh -huh. went up to Noel Coward at a party, and he said, I'm Chuck Connors. He said, of course you are, dear boy. <laughs> <laughs> and that was that. That was it. Yeah. Welcome uh, to the... <laughs> Welcome to the program, and uh, now I'm not sure if this is, uh, if I can believe this, but people are explaining to me that one of your first American acting jobs mm. was right here in this building. Right here, uh, two floors up, where they do Saturday Night Live. In the 8H, the 8H. big, big studio. Yeah. Yeah. What, what did you do there? Uh, oh, it was 1953. What's that, 39 years ago? Wow. And uh, it was, the first job I had was for Robert Montgomery Presents. Uh, and it was a play with, I did with an actress, Phyllis Kirk and Diane Lynn. And I played a French United Nations diplomat. Mm -hmm. And I remember, you know, sort of thinking with the restrictions they had in live television in those days. Because she says, uh, oh, you've got to be very careful, Diane Lynn says to Phyllis Kirk, about United Nations diplomat. I went up with one once and he came riding down Fifth Avenue on a camel wearing a fez. Mm -hmm. And we got to the, the transmission, the dress rehearsal, and they said, no, that's out. You can't say it came down on a camel. It came down on an elephant because the show was sponsored by Lucky Strike. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so the sponsors controlled the content of the oh, show yeah, very, yeah. very tightly. If you, if you worked for Chesterfield, you couldn't say you were happy because that had connotations to be happy-go-lucky. Uh -huh. Oh, uh, I see. Yeah. LSMFT, <laughs> which we all know what that means. Yeah. Uh, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Of course it yeah. does. Nothing to do with loose sweaters. <laughs> what, uh, oh, no, there's another meaning, then, is what you're saying. Yes. <laughs> uh, tell me at the party after the show. <laughs> uh, now, you must have been a kid, then. How old a, a man were you when you were doing that? I was four. <laughs> <laughs> I was a very young diplomat. Yeah. But I remember, I, I was coming up the, uh, here this afternoon, and I, uh, going along Madison, and I remember, I, I did about four or five jobs in this building. And I got paid, you know, this is in the 50s, and I think I got two or $300 for a show. Mm -hmm. and, it's about what you're getting tonight. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting nothing. <laughs> oh, what? It's about what I'm getting tonight. Uh, but anyway, and I, 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 had, I had to get from here to uh, 555 Madison Avenue or 666, 666 which was okay. MCA's building, my agent's. And I had to get there in a hurry because there was probably another job in the office. Mm -hmm. So I grabbed a taxi, which I didn't normally use to do. And I arrived uh, outside the thing and I took a bill out of my pocket, a dollar bill, and I said, keep the change, it was 75 cents. Mm. It was very lavish, yeah. keep the change. And the taxi went, boom, and he was off like a shot. And I went, oh, God. It was a hundred dollar bill. <laughs> he thought crazy Englishman. <laughs> cool. No, that's a great story. You should do that. You should just, oh, anywhere you go, slap down a C note. Keep the change. Well, of course. <laughs> uh, you, know, you know who's... A C note uh, doesn't get you to, to Kennedy Airport. Yeah. You know who uh, um, has been here a couple of times is uh, Tony Curtis. Oh, he's lovely. Yeah, and, we, and uh, I talked to him about the television show that you and he did together. The Persuaders. Yeah, it was on ABC here in the United mm. States, but I think it was, was it a British production originally? Oh, yeah, we, we, we did it for Lou Grade. I, uh, t t Tony, when we first did it, he, he was uh, a non-smoker, and he was leading the campaign in America against smoking. And right. It was a big television campaign. Yeah. And we arrived, and in those days I smoked. And we arrived at Tony's house with the the producer, Bob Baker, and the writer, Terry Nation. And we said, uh, you know, this is what we're going to do. And we were about half an hour talking, and Lou Grade said, don't smoke, Tony doesn't like smoking. And after about an hour's conversation, we all wanted a cigarette, and I said, look, I know you don't smoke, but do, do you mind? 
And he said, dear sweet Leslie, it was his wife. He said, where's, where's that ashtray we used to have? He signed to do the show. Two months later, he arrived in London. I was ill in hospital, having a kidney polished. And I'm sorry? Having <laughs> just into having I mean, polished. Well, huh? I, no, I was having stones removed. <laughs> oh, I see. And as long as you're having to remove, polish it. What the heck? <laughs> Take the rust off so, and polish it. They work better that way. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, he, uh, they call it dialysis. But he, uh, he arrived, and so I was in the hospital, and I wasn't able to go to the airport. And he unfortunately had uh, some strange tobacco that uh, the governor of somewhere or other never inhaled. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so there was a terrible thing at the airport about, you know, Tony Curtis having this thing, and he got fined $50. Oh, I, I kind of remember that, actually. And Bob Hope was doing lines about Tony Curtis is still circling London three months later, <laughs> waiting to land. <laughs> but, you know, it's in knowing you now just a little bit, of course, and from your film work, and then when Tony comes, that was a great combination, the two of you, for that show. We had a, we had a great time doing yeah. it. He, he, he's very funny. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's pause here for a uh, commercial, and when we come back, we'll talk about anything else you want to talk about. Roger Moore is here, kids. Uh, Hiram Bullock, uh, Amanda Goad, and uh, other other things. Uh, let's talk a little bit about your life as James Bond. You were in uh, eight of those films. Uh, no, I was seven, actually. Seven of those mm -hmm. films. Uh, and it must have been uh, a difficult situation in the beginning, because you're following, of course, uh, Sean Connor, and, but it also probably very rewarding. But there must have been other drawbacks as well. Well, yeah, the drawbacks are trying to get paid on Friday. <laughs> the, the, I always figured they were trying to kill me. And... We had the violent explosions, which is really the thing I hated. I'm petrified of guns. I don't like all that, you know. Yeah. But what they did, I remember we were, we were shooting in the Gulf of Siam, and I, this was for a uh, man with a golden gun. I was doing a scene with Brit Eklund, and we were on this little island where Scaramanga, the villain Christopher Lee, has his headquarters. And I have, James Bond has set up all the explosions which we've done in the interiors, mm -hmm. and the island's going to blow up. Right. And, now, uh, will it actually blow up, or are these special effects that they put into the film somehow later? I mean, these, will it be actual these, explosions? Oh, it's actual explosions there and then. And so I've got the special effects man and the director. We're walking around, and they're saying, right, now you start off here in this doorway and with Brit, and you rush through. This is Brit Eklund, mm -hmm. who's wearing a bikini. Mm -hmm. and, and why not? What, what, else, <laughs> what else are you going to wear, I mean, when the island's going to blow sure, up? Sure, exactly. <laughs> and so they have these big, you know, like those tipster trucks they have outside a building they're demolishing? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, big... it's full of explosive. Right. It's oh, full my. of petroleum jelly. It's full of uh, bricks and everything mm -hmm. else. They say that will go off first as you go across there. Then you get there, you look back, and the next one goes. Then you go, now, the third and the fourth and the fifth, they all go just as you get to this big overhang but you're all right because you'll be behind it. I said, fine, you know, that's all right. My hands are getting like this. I said, w where, where's the camera? Or the camera is going to be. And I look and I, going out to sea, our boots with cameras on. <laughs> They're all getting off the island. <laughs> <laughs> and so there am I left with Brit, boom, the first one goes. I run up to there with Brit. She stands, I then have to grab her. And I am, her body sweating, my hand sweating, and she goes straight through my fingers like this. Yeah. And I, she's left standing there, and I turn around, I, Brit! And I, oh God, shall I be James Bond, who would leave her? <laughs> or shall I, shall I be Roger Moore and the gentleman? And I rush back and I got her, but by this time the other ones started going, and uh -huh. I put my arm around her, and this flame shot around, and she had little blonde, she used to have little <laughs> short blonde hairs up her back, and I felt them all crinkle. And <laughs> Oh, go away. Oh, my. So she was actually singed a bit, Oh, yeah, eh? she was singed. Yeah. But, but all the leading ladies, <laughs> all the leading ladies thought that if they stood near me, they were safe. Mm -hmm. Barbara Buck, I remember in uh, Spy Who Loved Me, and one, one of the villain's sets is being blown up, of course, again. That's all Bond did was blow things up. <laughs> and he should have been a balloon manufacturer. But anyway, I'm uh, standing there. <laughs> They're slow, aren't they? <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm standing there, and my uh, 
makeup man comes up to me and he gives me two little things to put in my ears, not earrings. Mm -hmm. uh, Ear but, you know, to plug. stop. She says, well, Barbara says, what are those for, Roger? <laughs> I, I, said, I said, because they're going to be very loud bangs. Uh -huh. Oh, well, should I have some? <laughs> I said, yeah, why not? You know, so these are mine. <laughs> you get your own. <laughs> uh, she said, well, what, what do we do when the explosion? I said, we run. <laughs> she said, why, will it be dangerous? I said, of course it'll be dangerous. She said, oh, I thought if I stood near you, I'd be safe. Yeah. <laughs> She'd been speaking to Burdett. Yeah. <laughs> and then, is she, is she married, the one who's married to Ringo Starr? Yep. Well, there you go. What, that's, uh... <laughs> um, and and uh, what, what can you tell us about your involvement with the, the Amazon? Your trip there recently? Have, yeah, do I you came, go back, there? Yeah, came right. back this morning from Rio. Is that right? I am, uh, this little button here means that I am a representative of UNICEF. So you were there for the environmental summit? Uh, yes, because the, uh, the children are very much involved in the environment because, as I say, it is their world that we have borrowed from them and they expect it back in a good condition. So I went down to Manaus to host a show called Viva Terra Viva, which will go out on the last day of the conference mm -hmm. uh, with Roger... Uh, who the hell was it? With John Denver, mm -hmm. I think of Roger, Roger Miller. No, it wasn't. He was not there. It was Roger, Roger Miller. Well, that, that, it wasn't that, Roger Miller. It was Sean Connery. That ain't a bad show, though. Roger and, Miller, hell with it. And then, <laughs> and then on Tuesday on the beach, in the Ipanema Beach, I, I hosted or emceed a big show, which was for the pre-summit, the non-governmental organizations. And people, a lot of green pieces, a lot of people mm -hmm. protesting. And we had uh, all the governors of Brazil and the Prime Minister of Norway, Mrs. Brundtland, Grohal Brundtland. Oh, yeah, she's been here. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't, you couldn't, couldn't forget her. <laughs> but on a serious note, she, she is one of the key women, and Norway is probably the best example of a country doing something about the environment. Well, good for you. And we should do. Very, very impressive. For the kids' sake. Very impressive effort on your part. Uh, It was a, a great pleasure to meet you. Thank so this you very is much for your time. Unless you want to hang around. You want to hang around? I like it here. I like the music. All right. Well, you can hang around then. Well, Roger and I will be right back after this. Uh... A bit later, Hiram, you were he was in the band the first how many years of the show? First two, three two, years, two and, a half, two and a half years. Then he left, and now you're like Mr. Big Shot solo recording star, huh? <laughs> and you like and you're spending all your money on outfits, aren't you? Look at that. <laughs> uh, where is the little note I had about Archie Bell and the Drells? Is that still here? We found the name of their other hit, Paul. Well, uh, well, I don't know. It's gone now. It'll be back here in a minute. Hiram Bullock will be playing a little song later. Thank you very much. Thanks. Nice job. Uh, Archie Bell and the Drells. <laughs> I just can't stop dancing. That's right. Yeah. I just can't stop dancing. Yeah. Uh, 19, 1967. Yeah. Wow. Imagine that. Good Lord. All right. Okay. That's the answer to our music uh, quiz. Uh, I hope you had that at home. <laughs>